The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Don't be scared now, but it looks like you just wandered straight into you mind country. That's you mind, short for unaffiliated mind games, and you ain't never going to be the same again. Brace yourself. It's time for Red Hot Truth Injection. Oh yeah! That's right, bitch. We're rounding up the sheeple and shaking them awake. You mind? Too damn bad. We're gonna set fire to the wool over your eyes. Feel the burn, baby. Hot damn. We're toppling the lies of the lamestream media, one by one. Woo-wee! Watch them bad boys fall. Hey, Universe A. This is Universe B, call it, and we're going to tear you a new one. You mind? Warning, things are going to get real weird if you're not watching this with video, but, uh, you know, stay tuned anyway. Oh, well, if it isn't another Creeping Wave sticker set, brought to you exclusively by Indiegogo. Just look at those little fellas, oh my. Yeah, it's the were puppies. San Diego werewolf had himself a litter, and boy, are they cute. My goodness. Yes, sirree, those little were puppies right there are so fluffy. You're gonna die! Hey kids, I brought dinner. Oh, Don't do this to me! Please let me go! Oh, no! Oh, that's my arm! Oh, it's awful! It's my arm! It's my leg! I need that! Ah, at least I have still left! No! Where about these puppies? Ah. <laughs> that's right! The wear puppies! They can be yours if you dare to donate. To the creeping wave and you go go. Oh my gosh, that got out of hand really quickly. You guys should definitely donate to the Creeping Wave Indiegogo and give back to the actors who make Creeping Wave possible and not sound like this every episode. Hey everybody, this is just a little update that we wanted to do to uh, let everybody know that we are so grateful to everybody who has been giving back to our performers through our Indiegogo. Um, we are just about right now to hit our uh, secret perk, which uh, that is the the werewolf. San Diego werewolf. Oh, you want to hold that? <laughs> We're going to have the San Diego werewolf is uh, one of our perks. Hold that up. And uh, th that sticker set comes with Anatole, who is a Soviet vampire. Hold on to him. Now you can... He has got dismemberable limb fun. Well, that's exciting. Here's his little feet. We'll put those. There we go. Now they're facing the right way. And his little arms. So the werewolf can just chew and chomp him to his heart's content. And that's fun. Now if you're listening to the podcast, instead of watching it, then you can always just go to our Facebook. Or we're going to put it up on Instagram. We're going to do a whole bunch of cool stuff so that you can see all these stickers we're probably going to be uh, putting cuts in between the video so that you can check it out too because it's it's a little hard to see <laughs> on the video. Uh, it's because it gets so shiny in the light. So, but we have wear babies, wear puppies that also go along all oh, the San Diego werewolf's litter. There are six wear puppies, and right now we're in the process of getting them printed. Yes, all oh, wear puppies. They're so so cute. And in the process of getting them printed, which means we, we've been going back and forth between uh, the printer, trying to get them cut into the right shapes, trying to uh, get them to occupy one sheet. So they may not exactly be this size when they come at you, but they're all going to be together, hopefully. <laughs> and that's just a thank you to everybody who has donated. Uh, and uh, goodness... We have so many wonderful people who have donated at this point. 
And I have to do this part as an insert because it actually updates. Uh, so thank you to Vanessa Cook Farmer who has donated one, two, three separate times. Oh my goodness. Sharon L. Marcott, who we love and adore because she is a sassy, sassy young lady, a mighty young lady as well. Uh, Quanta Langford, host of the Creative Brew Podcast, which you can catch on all your podcast catchers. Then there's Nixie Von Rose, who you can check out on her YouTube channel where she does tarot readings as well as uh, doing spiritual artwork. She can do your true self, your soul uh, illustration, and uh, even if you're not a big believer in the metaphysical, it's really interesting. Uh, we did a tarot reading on a podcast that I did a while back, and also she did a soul drawing for me, and I'm going to show that up on the screen here. It was pretty fantastic. Ali Ross, who is the writer and artist behind Familiar Monsters, the webcomic that you gotta check out. We've had her on the show. We love her very dearly. She's a fantastic artist, a fantastic writer, and uh, she's got amazing things coming out. So please make sure that you check out her work. Then we have the lovable Jennifer Cooksey. Jennifer Cooksey is the evil mastermind behind Horrorgasm. And you know what? She's also the voice of Shingles Briarborn, who's a character that appeared on the You Mind and is possibly going to be appearing soon on Creeping Wave Radio. We're not sure yet. Yes, it might be happening. Maybe not. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. And, uh, you know, because she's, she's scary. <laughs> you you, you got to be careful with a, a girl like Shingles, right? So then uh, we have uh, anonymous donors. And we also have Strontium. Yes, Strontium donated $38, which coincidentally is the same as the atomic number for Strontium. Strontium, if you are not down with your periodic table of elements, is an alkaline earth metal. Yeah, it's, it's very pretty, but it's highly reactive. So, yes, we, we may be a very geeky podcast, I, I think. You know, every time you think that, like, oh, no, we're not at the geek's table anymore, so, something like that it makes you go, yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> so uh, then we have, uh, let's see, another random donor. And, oh, my goodness, we do indeed have a donation from Sardo Numspa, which is very exciting. We always like when uh, villains from 80s movies give us a nice donation. So that's that's something and uh, that, uh, that donation actually is what set us over the top, I do believe. So, thank you. Thank you, Sardo Numspa. All right. Okay, and back to uh, the recorded stuff. Oh, my goodness, and we forgot about... The Lords of Petoskey. <laughs> the Lords of Petoskey, Pat and Diane Gower. My goodness, we, they actually, uh, they're old school, and they actually mailed us a check. And we took that check, we put it in the bank in our special account for our Indiegogo, and then we took the money and we put it into the Indiegogo. So <laughs> that was very exciting news. So, okay, guys, and I uh, just wanted to thank everybody who has contributed. We love you. We couldn't do it without you. And you guys have helped to unlock the secret perk, which is the Baby Werewolf, San Diego Werewolf Anatole sticker set. So hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy that. Okay, talk to you later and back to the recorded nonsense. So yeah, we're very excited about that. Very excited about our stickers. Um, and we just wanted to give you guys a quick update. We can't do a full episode this week because we're actually going to be doing uh, interviews for Horrorgasm coming up, which is really exciting. We've, we've got a whole bunch of like uh, bands and artists and showrunners that we're going to be interviewing for Horrorgasm. Um, well, not us so much as me. Yeah, I mean, probably you. You are a, a man of few words. Mm -hmm. So, but, but when you speak, it counts, right? No. No. <laughs> and uh, so, so we're very excited about that. And um, we're going to be, uh, hopefully, we're going to be sharing those interviews that we do with you uh, on the Mind. We're going to have a little bit of a crossover, so that's something for you guys to look forward to. Um, what else do we have in store for people? Just really working on the episodes, working mm -hmm. on getting all the audio cuts together. This is a rough time. This is like everything, like Murphy's Law, you know? Everything that could go wrong. 
did go wrong this year. I think that's for everybody. In the yeah. Show. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not anybody's fault. I mean, the fires and COVID and people losing their jobs and just. Of which from the fires, our skies are now an amber color. Yeah. They're kind of an amber color. It's kind of cool. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it would be cool if it wasn't for the fact that people were losing <laughs> their homes and animals were getting injured. People are getting injured and killed and that's terrible. That's not cool whatsoever, but the skies are, are interesting to look at. So, but, uh, they, they are harbingers of terrible, terrible things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and so we, uh, we were trying to get our audio together. Um, if it gets postponed, that's fine. As long as everybody is safe and everybody is taken care of, um, because, you know, audio podcasts can be pushed back and, and people can't be replaced that easily. <laughs> So, I, uh, I don't know, um, no, I, uh, a couple of years ago during the Witch Creek fire, I actually had to, um, gather up my, uh, my whole family and all the cats and my grandma and all her cats and our dogs. We had three Siberian Huskies, which are, are not easy animals to deal with. <laughs> um, they're lovable, but they're not. They're not trainable. They're not like agreeable a lot of the time. They, they have so much prey drive in them that uh, it, it's really difficult to say like, no guys, we got to get in the car because everything is on fire. And we had to evacuate. And uh, we went, wound up uh, just driving to where we had family in LA, but we didn't really have anywhere to stay. So we were uh, staying in a hotel. And now you weren't with me at the time. This no. was before we had met. <laughs> no, but we did the lilac fire we, evacuation. Yeah. Yeah, well, you did the lilac fire evacuation. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, in the, in, mm -hmm. when we were trying to get these animals in a hotel, we had to sneak them in. So if, if you find yourself in that situation, um, you, you basically just, just have to sneak them in, just <laughs> cause a distraction somewhere, and then like, okay, dogs, go! and hope they don't make any noise, which with huskies is, is yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. hard. So you just kind of have to stand there going like, Roar! like that, and just be like, this is what I do. It's cleansing. It's meditative. Mm -hmm. You just let it be. Yeah. I'm sure nobody bought it. I'm sure everybody knew what was going on. <laughs> so... Yeah, lilac, the lilac fire was We wound crazy. up staying at your parents. We wound up staying at my with parents' house. a household of all the rest of the family. Mm-hmm, everybody was there, <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. That was, because uh, it was during the holiday season. It was. And uh, all my brothers and sisters, uh, they, they either live out of state or they live considerable distance away, like in Northern California and we're in Southern California. And there are how many, how many nieces and nephews? Oh, gosh. I mean, altogether, there's nine, but I think there was only was six there at the time, because because one of them had not sprung into being mm. as of yet. <laughs> A couple of them had not sprung into being as of yet, actually. So there mm -hmm. was uh, there, but there was a lot of little kids running around, like toddler age kids. <laughs> So that was a very lively, fun household. It was kind of like like being a teenager again, <laughs> trying to find your space and get time to do your hair and all that kind of stuff. So that was that was an interesting. We we actually had a cat for a brief period during that. We, no, we didn't. Yes, we, we kind he of did. He was he was not our cat. But he wasn't there. No, no. It was no, he wasn't there. No. After the fires, there was this cat that kept coming around the house. There was a little orange and white cat and it was it was really, really cute. And he just always wanted pets and always wanted food. And we just saw him walking around the complex. And we have coyotes here. Like whenever I go to the gym or something, well, back when you could go to the gym, um, you always see the coyotes kind of roaming around the outside area. And uh, they, the large majority of the coyote diet in Southern California is... Quarter. Quarter of their diet is, is cat. Fluffy. Fl fluffy. Cat and dog. So, yeah. That, so that wasn't so great. So uh, we, we grabbed the little cat and we brought him in and we're taking care of him. And then we're going to go pay the uh, pet fee up front at the apartment. And mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're like, oh, that little orange and white cat. Oh, I think that belongs to someone else. So yeah, we gave him up. Yep. So we, we called and it did actually belong to someone else. We thought that, that it was a cat who had been abandoned in the fires. And that's why it was roaming around like 
not looking, you know, it really was like a clean, happy looking cat. No, it was a good cat. Yeah. It, it, if it if it had been abandoned, it had been for too long. So, but we just were taking care of them for a while, and so that kind of broke my heart. <laughs> that was that was a sad experience too. But uh, yeah, yeah. If you find but a now cat, we have cat cafes. Now we have cat cafes, so I, I can go get my cat fix. Uh, there is actually one in Vista where we live. There is a, a beautiful cat cafe, and I almost a adopted a really cute little cat named Heart. Uh, who jumped on my lap and fell asleep, and I was just like, oh, so precious. <laughs> but um, heart, uh, we we couldn't do it. We we have uh, we're in the process of finding a bigger place. Uh, it's taking a little longer than we'd hoped for, but uh, yeah. And we really, it's not fair to a cat to be somewhere that's so. You know, 530 square feet. Yeah, it's, it's really not fair to a cat to be somewhere where they can't jump and leap and run around and have fun because they, they're going to anyway. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, once we get a, a bigger place, perhaps, though I'm, I'm still kind of um, <laughs> bothered by the death of my prior cat. So it's just one of those things like, do you allow yourself to love something knowing that it's going to die? <laughs> within like, you know, 12 years. My, my last cat was like 22 years old. That's a pretty good run. So, but um, yeah, uh, that's, that's the situation. Well, that's okay. You got about 22 years with me. 22 years with you? Mm -hmm. well, what are you going to do after 22 years? <laughs> what are you going to turn into? I'm going to turn into anything. So, <laughs> so if you Corpse. are... No, well, please, man, yeah, let's not talk about that. That's very upsetting for me. <laughs> so... Um, as, as creepy as I am, that, that kind of stuff actually does, like, that does a number on me when I have to think about that kind of stuff. And if you are watching the video... You married an old guy. I did marry an old guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know what? It's it's always weird because um, at, at my old place of work, and I won't say where it was, um, people knew him as being considerably older than me when we uh, were getting married. and Ten years. Yeah, ten years. It's not that big of a deal. If I was like a teenager, it would be a big deal. If I was like 16. Or like when I was in the Persian Gulf War. Right, and I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> would have been creepy. You know, 21-year-old man Yeah. writing love letters to an 11-year-old. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, my, my biggest concern at the time, I think, was like uh, memorizing the lyrics to Vanilla Ice yeah. and your... Your concerns probably outweigh that. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so, um, but yeah, my old place of work, people would always comment on that. Like, well, is he really rich? Or that kind of thing. No, he's. I work for the government. <laughs> he's a government biologist in conservation, which, mm -hmm. yeah, they, there's no funding for that. <laughs> he's just cool. I don't know. So, but I, people don't like that. People don't like that you just uh, married an old guy because he got along with them. But I don't know. I'm an oldest child in my family. So um, I, I, I think there's, if you're an oldest child and this is your situation, then uh, tell me. But I feel like oldest children, we always kind of gravitate to adults or to little kids. That kind Because of, we always want, we either want to like, you know, we, adults we understand, that kind of thing. Like, <laughs> they they make sense to us, that kind of thing. They're, they're the disciplinarians, and they're safe. They're not going to do anything messed up. And little, little kids, like, you take care of them. You take care of your little brothers and sisters and stuff like that. But people your own age are, are weirder, uh, like a, a strange... I always think whenever I meet somebody who's around my own age, I always think that they're going to say something nasty and hateful about me. <laughs> Which they normally um, do. Yeah, they normally do. <laughs> and, but the thing is, like, I was at a, a wine shop in LA, and I was just walking by, and there was this older couple, like sixties or seventies, um, and they were like snickering, and they did that thing where you walk by and they're quiet, and I just turned around, and I was like, yes, and then they were just staring at me like dumbfounded, and uh, I was like, did you have something to say? And then they're like, no, no, and get the really creepy voice going. <laughs> and uh, then the woman just whispers to the man, ugh, she turned around. I can't even believe it. It's so disgusting. Why? Why? Because you're all assholes. 
And it was just... <laughs> I, 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 sometimes I feel like I should wear a video camera, like, around, just to record the, like, really horrible things people say to me. <laughs> during what about one of those paint guns? You just tuck No. And it sprays paint all over? No, no, no. We don't want to be aggressive. Just passive aggressive. That's... Well, that's passive aggressive. <laughs> I mean, I Because the aggressive would have been use a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> now, I should warn you, if you're, if you're watching this... <laughs> Uh, and you're looking at us right now. I normally don't look the way that I do. Let's see. Close up for you here. Oh, my goodness. See, I have a snake contacts on because I was, I was doing a little bit of like a Sir Hiss kind of moment right here. And if I'm, I'm touching my eyeball, that's probably going to make some people squeamish. But uh, I have uh, these snake contacts on that I got when I was going to play Crowley a couple Halloweens ago, which we might still do. Um, and they keep, every time I blink, they, they twirl on my eyes so the pupil is never upward completely, which I thought I've had, um, like regular contacts that were snake eyes before and that happened. But I thought with a sclera lens where it covers the whole eyeball that, and I got some scales that I painted on. Um, well, that's okay. Enjoy them because you're better Aziraphale. I'm a better. He thinks I'm the Aziraphale mm -hmm. and that he's the Crowley. If you watch Good Omens, if you don't, uh, or if you, if you are uh, spiritually opposed to watching a show with those kind of themes, then uh, don't don't worry about it. <laughs> but Aziraphale, well, I mean, she likes she likes good wines, mm -hmm. likes good music, mm -hmm. likes books, yeah, and likes good food. And for people who don't watch the show, uh, those are all character traits of Aziraphale, mm -hmm. who is an angel on Earth guarding over uh, like humanity um, right before the end times are about to happen. And Crowley is uh, a demon mm -hmm. who is kind of in the same position but working for the other side. And, but uh, they're really not. They're, they're really... They're, they're working yeah. for their own thing. Yeah, they're, they're working for mm -hmm. their own thing. They love humanity and they love music and art and food and all the things that... Uh, all the corporeal pleasures. And they're kind of like... <sighs> I don't really want humanity to disappear. <laughs> it's a pretty good thing. So, but so I was Crowley because uh, it's it's very against my character. <laughs> Except I have the red hair. But yeah, um, but yeah, you have the red hair. I wonder if it'll show up on camera. You might have to get closer to the camera for yeah, people to see it. Camera. No, it's yeah, right. Chair is hard to. Hard, it's like hard a, to get out of. It's like a black cherry red. Right. So it's it's hard to see if you're not looking at the camera. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I got those contacts for that, but I was doing horrorgasm at the time. So uh, I couldn't um, wear them for that duration because uh, sclera lenses, um, they don't really bother me. Once they're in, it doesn't bother my eye at all. But um, when you wear them for over six hours, you're supposed to take them out and give yourself a rest period. And that's kind of difficult to do when you're in a public place where there's going to be a line for the bathroom and people pounding on the door and you're trying to like squeeze your contact out. <laughs> and um, that's, uh, you don't squeeze your contact out. You, you just sort of gently slide it on your eye. <laughs> Sque squeezing your eyeballs is not a thing that you need to do. So th there's some things, people always say like, don't knock it till you try it. There's some things that y you don't really need to try to know it's not going to work out for you. And that is one of them. So, yeah. Maybe she punched me one time. That was, I, I was putting in these, these contacts and they were overly dry. Um, and, she didn't uh, hit me hard. I, I didn't hit you hard, no. but you, you I, I couldn't get them out because they were overly dry. And I kept trying to pull them out. Uh, and uh, you said, let me do it. And you reach for my eyeball. <laughs> and I was like, no! You don't reach for somebody's eyeball that's that's not how it's done all right probably so, would have Crow i mean yeah so but yeah um so that is uh we just wanted to give you guys a really brief update wanted to check in with you wanted to make sure that there was an episode of the you mind that went up even though we're kind of busy with a lot of different projects right now because i'm an idiot who can't say no <laughs> The, the truth is, like, I like being busy. I like being constantly occupied by something. Um, and so... No, that's all right. Mm, and well, it, I've also had several different projects pop up that mm -hmm. laid low for a long time. Now it's like, let's get them done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
so we wanted to make sure that we had something to present to you and to thank everybody uh, who has been contributing to the show and to the Indiegogo and um, thank you so much for listening, for watching, for whatever you are doing because it helps us out so much um, to have a creative outlet where other people actually want to participate and play with you. It's amazing. It's like putting the snooze button on your childhood and you get to play make-believe like every week or, or you just get to like interview really cool people, really interesting people who um, in my real life I would not probably go up and approach um, but when I can use like the facade of the podcast and I'm like, I can have a conversation with you <laughs> because this is part of a project. So, so it's, it's okay for me to talk to you or ask you about different things that are going on. But um, <laughs> in my real life, I'm just like, okay, all right. I'm, would you say I'm like a lot different when I do podcasting than I am in real life? I probably don't cry as much. So. All up until you turn on the, turn on the camera. <laughs> And then as soon as you turn it off. As soon as I turn it off, just mm -hmm. crying. Non-stop. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Let's just say uh, yeah. frustrated and... Mm, passionate. Like passionate. Yeah. Like, Me, I could talk to crowds all day long. Yeah. Because that's what I do. You love it. So, but yeah, it's it's not, not for me, though. So. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So, but you just, if you put me in a, a podcast situation, if you say like, oh, you're going to do this character or you're going to interview this person, if it, if it becomes like a functional thing, um, I'm good. Like as, as long as it is inside of the envelope of uh, like a project or a play or a performance piece, that's good. Then I can turn it on. But just, if it's just me out there, that's... I usually just start talking and make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You're good at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, then, is there anything else we nope. should look at? I think we need to. I think that's it. Cut it down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. And thank you for watching or listening or whatever you are doing today. Oh, I should show the new baby. So, um, mm. I don't know if you guys noticed all of our babies that we have up here. This is a new baby. Oh, What's her name? Um, I, I think Severin. Severin's my favorite name for a uh, little girl. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Now go over a while. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, it's like naming a boy Percival or something like mm -hmm. that to make sure he gets beat up a lot in high school. It's more like naming a little boy Severus, which that's kind of how that turned out for him. <laughs> so, um, But she was part of the decorations at Albertson's. And uh, somebody had, they had uh, these dolls, they had a bunch of them, and they had little white centers for their eyes, and somebody had picked hers out, so they marked her price down. And uh, with me, if I see a broken toy, or uh, something that is in some way um, defective or injured, I'm always like, that's me! <laughs> and so I, I have to have to get it if there is a broken toy or an injured toy that needs love then I it comes to my house <laughs> that is our new baby so yes. oh she's so cute <laughs> uh, All right. and, okay I think that's it that's it all right take care everybody Adios. bye a big hairy thanks to all of our donors Vanessa Cook Farmer, Sharon L. Marcotte, Quanta Langford, Nixie Von Rose, Ali Ross, Anonymous Donor, Strontium, Jennifer Cooksey, Anonymous Donor, The Lords of Petoskey, and Sardo Numspa. Thank you so much. Please be sure to check out our Indiegogo campaign. The link is going to be in the description below and help support all of the artists who make Creeping Wave Radio possible. Special thanks to Savage C. Walnar, our legendary announcer who we couldn't do it without. And you know who else deserves a little bit of thanks? A little spot of thanks for Ethan Mexell, the composer of the You Mind theme song, Demilitarized Zone. We love it. You love it. And you know what else I love? Patreon.com. Because you can go to Patreon.com slash LucidNap and make a monthly donation to help support the show. Or go to BuyMeACoffee.com slash LucidNap for small one-time donations. Or you can even go to my personal website, lostbreadcomic.com, 
LostBreadComic.com allows you to buy all sorts of prints and stickers and cool stuff that you won't find anywhere else. So go ahead and check that out. You might find something that you love. Something you didn't know you needed. Yes. You can also follow us on all of our social media, which will be linked below. And we're also going to say, please check out Creeping Wave Radio. Because Creeping Wave Radio is our audio drama. It's the companion piece to the You Mind. It is a, like an old time radio show. We have a lot of local San Diego musicians, a lot of so local San Diego performers. We'd really like you to check it out. I write all the scripts. I draw all the art. It's a comic book for your ears, and it's not like anything you've heard before. So please, please do go ahead and give that a listen. You'll be glad you did. I just want to thank you so much for watching, for listening, whatever you are doing today, because it makes it all worthwhile for us. And you know what else makes it all worthwhile? No, just come in real close. I'll, I'll tell you. It's, it's no secret. It's our Patreons. Yes, The Gramerica Show, Nikki Benfield, and Neil, our lovable Patreons who we love dearly and who make all of this possible. Yeah, we couldn't do it without people at home just like you. The You Mind is brought to you by LucidNet Productions in cooperation with a scary old man. I'm not that scary. Don't I don't try so. to be, but I just am. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. A podcast where three horror authors discuss monsters? It must be Wondering Monster Roll Initiative! I feel like once you put the mask on it... It's, once you put the mask on it, it's a monster. Please rise for his yeah, dishonor. No, uh, Judge of the abyss. The fed his bag at the table of suffering. You brought... You brought, you brought the Whomping Willow. I brought a goddamn kaiju. <laughs> we'll see you every Monday. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network. Network.